Welcome to the podcast. I like that. I just told Jackie not to shout down the microphone. That's what he brought back for the second one. Keep going. I'm excited. We'll I'm excited and trying not to shout because it's 2020. I was going to say 2021. It's not. It's. I'm sorry. I've got no idea what the year. It's 2022, which is difficult because actually as we record this now, it isn't 2022. It's 2021. But as you're listening to this now, Timbo, welcome to 2022. You are literally in the future, my friend. Um, as we record this podcast, but people listening are in 2022. I hope you had an amazing Christmas. I hope you had an amazing New Year, and I hope you're ready for an amazing 2022. That was a big start. I know. You've, you've travelled in time. You've you've laid out you laid you've laid your stall out for this year. Well, Jack, how do you that, feel? That, how do you that feel? Is going to be the theme of the podcast. How do you feel being in the future? I hope you're really. I'm more excited. Now. I didn't even realise. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. What did you do for New Year's? Um. Bear in mind, it's not New Year. <laughs> yeah, probably had an early night. See if we could offload the kids at mum and dad's and went to bed early. That would probably what it was. That's the plan anyway. Uh, right, today we're going to talk a little bit about what you can achieve in a year. Now, year, years, I think, as I've got older, go by quite quickly. But if we're a little bit focused and, and committed down a, a particular path of pursuit, there's a few Ps for you, Jacko, um, you can actually get quite a lot done. And we're going to talk about how what you can do in a year and how to maximize what you can do in a year. And actually, when we think about training, we're so conditioned now because of our, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of sh- our brains shrinking because of certain influences, but we often think in six or eight week blocks, well, from a training perspective, it takes quite a while to sort of really achieve anything of any real value. And we, should, we need to be thinking in bigger periods. So we're going to talk a little bit about just some basic principles of periodization. We're going to wrap that into actually what that means and how that you can use that to support yourself to achieve your goals over a longer period. And that's really where we need to be setting our sights. Yeah. And if you, if you haven't got on board with it yet, we're hopefully going to change your mentality and mindset to a long-term approach uh, hopefully by the end of this uh, podcast, you are thinking about, okay, what I do tomorrow and what I do this week in training is important, but actually it's what I'm doing for the rest of the year um, that's going to help me achieve some of those goals that you might have been setting over this last uh, last week as you reflect on on what you're going to want to achieve this year. And to help you do that, Timbo... Hang on a minute, Jacko. Oh. I'm going to... I've got I want a quick quiz. Yeah, oh, go on. If I said Love to you... Quiz. One pound forty-three. What would you think you could get for one pound forty-three? Well, I can get for one pound. I can get a litre, and this is great value. To be fair, I can get a litre of organic, grass-fed milk. Um, yep. And with the forty-three p, I don't know. Well, you're gonna split you it can up. barely get. A, we could, you could probably get a, anything forty-three p. Yeah, could you? You could get maybe like a chomp or something. I don't know, chocolates are quite expensive. These <laughs> a 10p chomp. No, I'll tell you what you do. <laughs> Inflation's crippled us, isn't it? I'll tell you what you do. You save your, you save your 43p and you wait till uh, after Easter because you could probably get an Easter egg in a sale post-Easter. Those mm. babies are cheap after Easter for maybe 43p. Let me tell you what you can get for one. Go on, Timbo, tell us. £1.43 will buy you one week's access to... Our online training program, but I don't want a week. I want a standard annual. I don't want a week. Yeah, I want a a year. Okay, I've divided. I've divided it down. So basically, (laughs) seventy-four pounds and twenty-five pence, I believe it is, for a whole year of access to our standard annual membership packages, which includes twelve training programs. It's got all your favourites. It's like a selection box. It's a selection box now, aren't it? It's got. (laughs) It's got your handstand, your human (laughs) flying. There's a guy who actually does the train ride down to uh, on Manchester. I go to Manchester quite regularly, and and I love it because he comes down the aisle. I'm digressing. This is a good story. And he always, he's got, he's, I've been going to Manchester for six years, and the guy's been on the same train for six years, but he comes down and he takes such joy in his job. Your chocolates, your crisps, your, back, your, your flat jack, your chocolates, your tea, your coffees. Your, yeah. Is it, P- like, is it P.A.K.? Okay? <laughs> but yeah, it, it almost is. But what he does is he goes the whole length of the carriage, and it's something different all the way down. Like, he literally goes through the whole, the whole yeah. train, but the tone of voice that he does it in. So I'm gonna, I'll do this presentation oh, now about what's in, the, what's in the annual standard membership in the same style as my mate from the train. So when you, when you take your 25% off to get it for 74.25, and you've, you've done your seven-day free trial, so you've had a week uh, already for free, then what, what, things will, what, what selection of things will we, will we be working for, uh, Timbo? Your body weight basics, handstands, human flags, back levers, frog to handstand, muscle up, strength and play programs, <laughs> VIP memberships, <laughs> push up. <laughs> Classic. Oh. Anyway, 
74 quid, 25% off the main price, which is £99, reduced down to £74, £1.43 a week to access to all of that. And if that wasn't just come for seven, based on that joke alone, <laughs> was worth was worth a seven-day free trial. There's, so come and check it out because it is class. There's a job for you after all of this in uh, in advertising, isn't there? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, guys, on a, on a serious note, like they're having that, Having knowing that you've signed up for something for a year, you've, you've, the the investment is it's the time. It's the time to actually learn about your training. It's the time to put the actual training into practice. Um, you know the the fact that it's just seventy four quid uh, for the year means that financially it's not really the investment. The investment is what you're going to be able to do in time. So if you are committed to making real change and real progress with your training and how your body feels, then we would love to welcome you on board. And um, what you're going to get for that is support from the coaches throughout the whole of the year. And then really importantly, the community of other online people just like you, just like me and just like Tim, all trying to work together and supporting each other. So um, come join the party, be part of the School Cassettes family uh, with your online membership. 25% off. The code is New Year 25. But don't worry, when you get to the checkout, the code's already in so you don't even have to worry about it. But just so that you know that there is one, just to make you feel better, probably for some people that everyone loves a code, don't they? Oh, you got a discount code? Yeah, but it's already applied, so don't worry. I'm one of those people who always searches. You know, if I'm going to buy something online, yeah. I'll search discount code sites to try and find and what, one. If I find one for like 50, 10, 50 percent off, I'm. Oh, yeah, but what is it with those sites? It's like, oh yeah, I found ten different ones, and none of them work. It's like, who, who, yeah. who's made a website that's just called like vouchercodes.com and just has Do loads you know of codes, and none of them are. work? This is my this is my theory, and I don't know if I'm right or not. I think they're just affiliate links. So you go through, they they tell you they've got a code, you uh, click on the link, you go through, you go on and buy it anyway, and then they get an affiliate. What? They're like, yeah, fifty percent off, yeah, coupon codes dot com, yeah, fifty percent off, yeah, no worries. Yeah, and it that's my, never that's applies. My, uh this this that code sorry, that code's expired, but we're still tracking your cookies. Yeah, but- yeah, but buy a big TV anyway now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have 5%. <laughs> I got a TV last year. Right. I got to, Speaking of good sales, I got a TV last year. Smart TV. I've, I've just paid my TV license again. Just got back on board. And, uh, well, no, sorry, renewed this year. It's painful having to pay that again. But anyway. I haven't paid one. I got one. Um, Don't watch telly. Smart TV. J- JVC. Old school Arsenal. Remember them? Um, and they were like 170 quid. Banging. Yeah. It's like that's 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 not that's value. It's not as good value as one pound forty three a week for your your training, but it's not bad. Right, we've we've spent ten minutes you know talking. I, we, we haven't even. I know, but do you know what? <laughs> what, I, what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue is in. If you spent one year watching television, you're going to be far worse off than if you spend one year spending your year on calisthenics training. Ooh, yeah. And you'll have achieved a lot more and learnt a lot more along the process, right? Uh, there you go. I've got we one. Have, bit of ma- sorry, this I've is got one more. New Year. We're coming in hot <laughs> this year, aren't we? It's not even a, do you know what this is? We're recording this in 2021. We're tired and we need to. Our minds are mush. Good, um, if, We're talking about men on the train. If I bought that TV last year for 170 quid and it was great value, actually, how many school car sales memberships could I have got? Mm. I'd, I'd, uh, two, two and a bit. I don't know the exact math. I've not to decimal places. <laughs> I'm terrible at mental arithmetic. Um, right, I did further maths at uni, use... you know, in one of our modules. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. People are like, you're terrible at podcasting. Get on with it. <laughs> right. Let's do it. I don't know if that... Sit back I've... and enjoy more of this. Probably, hopefully, we're going to try and be a little bit more... Um, uh, I can't even think. <laughs> what are we going to be? We're going to be in, 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 in enlightening and inspiring a little bit more and encouraging focused. and focused. Streamlined. We'll see. Right. Sit back. Enjoy us trying to have an intelligent conversation on the first podcast of 2022 roll that jingle for the first time listen players (laughs) you're listening to the movement strength and play podcast by the school of calisthenics here are your hosts tim and jacko so yeah, let's, let's let's bring things under. Let's bring things under somewhat of some 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 level of control. Um, before we delve into a little bit more of around the advices uh, and sort of the things to to help people with how we go about taking this longer term approach to our trading, the benefits of that, and the you know you've talked about uh, consistency being the superpower, which I do really love. Um, but from a to give a bit of context from ourselves, 
what either in this last year have you changed slash achieved slash like something that's been a difference that you uh, and then or either that or any other year but just to give us some personal context of like okay in a year like this has happened or this is something that's yeah. or you know it could have been something in the past we go like actually because i sometimes look back and go crikey you know you feel like a year goes really fast but then you actually we've only go well so what did happen this year and looking through your phone at photo you know like you it, yeah. um your iphone will show you like oh this time last year you were doing this it's like crikey actually yeah a lot has happened so do you want to kick us up i can text yeah, yeah can i give you a little quick analogy so just from from the, an applied analogy from the world of sport just to kind of i want to set the time frames a little bit if you can't do a muscle up or a human flag or anything that you're trying to work towards for that matter it's a similarly contextualize it in the same thing as like trying to achieve a personal best it's a it's a way that you've never moved yeah. before if you've never done a ring muscle up now, if we are preparing an athlete for a competition and, and whatever level, it doesn't need to be a, a high performance athlete. It can be somewhere at the same level. We don't start eight weeks out and go, let's just try and do this thing we've never done before. We'll often <laughs> spend 12 months doing it, if not longer. And so we, we'll often reverse engineer things. So if we know where we roughly want to be in four years time, we then work out what those individual years look like yeah. to build towards that picture. So when someone tries to sell you a like a short program or we're going to worse still we kind of program hop from different programs to different program we never spend long enough in a, a, a coaches or a, a school of thought or a sort of a philosophy to really sort of get that adaptation so if we jump from one program to the next we might only ever get snippets from it whereas if you go like if an athlete works with me for a year or longer they're working in a process which is cohesive and joined together and one stage fits to the next if they jump jump with me for a bit and say well jack and i didn't work together and they went to jacko for eight weeks and then went to another strength and condition coach for eight weeks they never get anywhere because you're never really getting that consistency of training so just have a think about that in terms of how you look at your training and um and and maybe that just helps to kind of give a little bit of, of of texture in terms of what i've achieved in the last year it's been relatively transformational really because i've sort of my training philosophy has changed a little bit in that I'd spent a lot of time during lockdown training at home by myself and that was okay. I'd, I'd done like, I tried early morning sessions. I was getting up before we had Naomi, my, my second, who's now nine months old. Um, I was getting up at sort of 5.30 in the morning in training and that was good. Like I did. Oh yeah, I remember you going through a phase of getting up really early yeah, for training. Yeah. It was all right. It, it worked for that for that period. Actually, I used to quite enjoy it. I, I, Naomi's a real light sleeper, so I, I literally don't dare move anymore. Because <laughs> if you wake the baby up at five in the morning, and like everyone's grumpy. Um, and then yeah, so and then over the summer, I started playing around with a little bit more lower body strength stuff. So doing some quite high volume like weight vest um, things, which kind of just prompted me into sort of like just rethinking about what my lower body training looks like. Um, and wanting to get back into a little bit more sort of like loaded strength work. Um, still calisthenics and body weight training largely for uh, upper body stuff. Um, and then, yeah, I've kind of come through this end of the year. I've started CrossFit, but like I've even just as examples, and this is just to show you that I'm, we are not just kind of like spouting this because it's the beginning of the year. This is genuinely what we are, how I've structured my mindset around this. Mm. I've said to people, I'm going to do CrossFit for a year. That, and I'm, because it's going to take me a year to either one get half decent with it, two understand it better, um, and three to get any kind of adaptation that I'm going to get from that form of training. So I, I'm I've, I'm literally I'm in for a year, and and, that, and that's not even BS. Like yeah. that is exactly. And, and then at the end of the year next year, I'll decide if I want to do another year or not. Um, but I didn't go. I'm going to go for two months and see how it goes. Like, like if you don't like it, then that's fine. Like don't don't flog it out. But even training sometimes is difficult like there are periods in your training where it is not that much fun but you've got to stay the course to get if if what you are working towards and this goes back to the podcast where we talked about your why if what you're working towards is of value enough to you there are going to be bits and places where it's hard um and you've got to go through those to get to the end point that, that you're 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 targeting yep does that answer the question yeah. at all i can't remember what it was um <laughs> the question was to do with what like what what's potentially been changed for you in the year or um <clears throat> i don't think i've achieved anything i can't go i this year i had can now do this that i couldn't do this time yeah. last year i don't think i've done yeah. that yeah i mean some of but that I've, I've, my training has gone more broad i'm more generalist than i was specialist this time last year perhaps yeah well then and if that was it's a bit because often say but when you've like 
you've signed up for something or you've set yourself a goal, then you've like, okay, I, I either did or didn't achieve that goal that I set for that year. Like it's different if you have, whereas if you've, um, if that was a goal to become more of a generalist, then you've then achieved that. You've, you've made that change yes, with the training. Yeah, yeah. It's just not quite the same sort of like ticking off of a goal or uh, as specific or as, uh, I guess, <laughs> but that's the whole point of a, of a, a, a generalist, I guess. Um, Something that. What about you? So, um, I've you've achieved quite a lot this year. You've you've, you've gone gone down a very different route. Of some, yeah, I guess the, some things have been some things have been quite different. A lot of my life has been overtaken by just trying to breathe better and realizing that actually that was something I was doing quite badly because of my head injury. Yada yada yada. Um, but before I get on to something to I want it to, like something that's changed and this is probably being something I've not necessarily really you'll know a bit about this type of stuff but not necessarily like documented it that much on like social media and stuff because it's just not that um exciting but I've had um we've always talked about a number of like old injuries from rugby and this that the other and whatever and I've had like stuff that um I guess is like ongoing and potentially like carries on being ongoing one of them will always make you laugh there's there was there's one thing with my right knee that something popped when i was doing some stupid challenge and tim laughed at it in the we were in the gym when this happened still laughing at it now it was hilarious <laughs> and when something pops like that like it was it was it was reasonably loud like so i don't know what it it was all i don't know what it was yeah, yeah. and they never had a scan or anything so but i still have a bit of issue around the, my, my my right like that inside my right knee sometimes and then my um right ac joint is not attached that's a rugby one and that never will be so that has some movement and like sometimes it moves about a bit sometimes it anyway so it's these types of like niggles that we all pick up through through life have just been something that in the past i've always sort of ignored a lot and just managed and they would annoy me quite a lot but i'd sort of just managed through and just push through uh, whereas over the last um it's probably been more significantly and through the whole of lockdown so not just this last year through 2020 as well of actually just going back and really addressing some of these things so like if i have an issue with my the, my ac joint what can i do to manage that better Rather than so, it's not. I'm not going to go and have an operation on it. I'm nothing like that, but because I just don't want to go under the knife. What can I do instead with my training? So my training, a lot of my, and this is, and I've taken, and there's been like so much more of a focus on my lower body um, as well, which I've really enjoyed. And when my right knee doesn't hurt as much, like that's really nice as well. If you know what I mean. Um, and I guess one of the things with the, so my, my so yeah, so my training's become a lot more sort of. Um, simple or basic but it's just been like very much nourishing what the body needs and it's starting to build back up i feel like i'm building like 2.0 and it's like it's it it moves better it feels stronger i can't do like loads of crazy stuff because i've just stayed away from doing like crazy things um but i'm sure i can still do a flag and stuff like that which i guess for some when you've never done stuff like that before it's almost like We've been doing it for that many years now that it a lot of that sort of stays in the system, doesn't it? Um, yeah. So I'm quite looking forward to 2022 where I'm going to stick with this for like winter when you can't. I like doing more stuff outside when I can, but there's going to be a period where mm. when I'm inside, I'm still trading all from home, not going to the gym. Uh, but just for the amount of space and equipment and stuff like things are just going to stay pretty basic or pretty simple for a few months. But I'm enjoying I'm enjoying doing that. I'm enjoying um, the simplicity of that. Um, I think that was one thing that I really sort of took from this summer, thinking back to that time. And, and I, when I was training at home, and I was the guy out in the car park, like it's sort of like um, just not many people do that sort of thing. But I don't have a big garden, so I could do some stuff. But when I was doing low body things, I was doing um, a lot of like walking lunge patterns. And I've got a weight vest and I've got a 50 kilo sandbag. And like, uh, crikey, you, you kept that, the amount of strength development and in strength, particularly around strength endurance from high volume lunges that I gained over the summer was ridiculous. Mm. And it wasn't, it's common. I mean, you can pick a weight vest up for like 80 or 100 quid yeah. like, or a sandbag for like 100 quid. Yeah. The sand's like cost you four pounds. You've got a 50 kilo tool. And if you don't think 50 kilos is a lot because you're used to deadlifting 150, 
start lunging with it and start lunging for it with volume and your legs will absolutely blow up and and it's a super accessible way to train so i'm i'm now yes i'm back in a crossfit environment or a gym environment but i am equally when the sun's shining more than likely going to be spending far more time outside mm-hmm. i don't want people to listen to this and go our oh, tim's kind of he's a splitter like judas has gone over to crossfit <laughs> it's more of like um, crossfit has got the gymnastics element in it so i'm taking what i've got from calisthenics and applying it into an environment which is slightly different so maybe less complexity from a perspective of trying to learn more advanced skills but i had a workout yesterday that had got sets of 20 handstand push-ups against the wall in it i did it in two sets of 10 but uh, but strict and when i've got muscle ups and stuff in there like i'm taking that and i'm now just combining it with some stuff which is like um a little bit more lower body focused and the other thing for me is like i like as I get older, I want to keep training power. Mm. So Olympic lifting movements where I'm keeping some twitch in the system is a positive because as we typically, as people get older, we get less reactive. Um, and so I like that kind of like a power-based environment of just starting to, it's still a maintenance of like, we've talked about this for a long time around phys- physical pension, but what are the attributes that you want to keep as you get older? Mm. And and if I do CrossFit like right for me, then I'm going to... Um, I, I can deliver or I can operate in that environment in a way which is sensible for me and my body, which respects that. And I can get what I want from it without becoming like absolutely smashing myself. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you, you talk about, um, talking about lower body training <clears throat> and also that whole thing about saying around, like just looking after some, some niggles and stuff like something I've not done, um, for a very long time is any pistol squats because, real going real deep on my right leg would aggravate that knee and i went for a long time where i would like go to that place and try to like sort it out but i was like getting myself i was just constantly aggravating it whereas i've not done anything on it for for ages and just doing like some other i've not even i've been the i've been doing some loaded with my sandbag some loaded lunge stuff some normal sort of single leg squatting stuff just just loads of like i've been doing a lot of volume but a lot of control through like pain-free deeper ranges, but super slow, like slow concentrics are just nasty, but I'm trying to build up some volume in my legs because of the running training that I want to do. And Mm. I went in yesterday, I just because I was just feeling really good in it, in some of the squats, I was doing a bit, some lower body stuff in the garden yesterday and I was just feeling good. So I, I went into a um, a pistol, but like on my left side, just starting completely sat on the floor and then just like popping up. And it was like so easy to get up. It was like, I haven't had that feeling of like, wow. Like something mm. felt just, but strength wise, I've just done plenty of, of, of that, but not like crazy heavy strength stuff at all, but um, and just converted like really well. And then, and then my right side, couple of reps from straight from the floor completely pain free and i just can't even remember when i've last like been able to do i've probably i've probably never i'm like 39 i'll be 40 next year and I, that's the best i've ever been able to do a pistol squat ever but this is like this leads back to that point about periodization and, and like <clears throat> i've got an example as well just to add a little bit more context so i did lots of sort of like weighted lunges so it's a 20 kilo vest over the summer i was doing sort of sets of hundreds 200 most i did was 300 50 kilo heavy like sandbag carriers like volume in these and like multiple different carry positions and we went in and we deadlifted at crossfit last week i think it was or the week before and it, we, they've been building it up so i had done a, a, a workout was five week five reps and it's like sumos and, and traditional normal deadlifts and then so it's five reps one week then three reps a week and another one was like a, a single traditional deadlift and a single sumo and i haven't done like deadlifting heavy for years and I'm not a big guy, so when you hear this number, you're like, oh, crikey, to me, it's a bit of work. <laughs> but I, I, I remember one time when we used to train at H3 Performance in Nottingham. Shout out to the guys down there. Um, I was about to lift 150, and there was a coach there, a guy called Lee, came up to me. He stood behind me, he was watching me doing this lift. And he go, Before I walked up to the bar, I just went, that looks heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I didn't lift it. I was like, I can't do that now, because you just put, that's the last thing you sort of say to somebody before they go under a heavy bar. <laughs> but that was before we started calisthenics. That was like early days, because I was still like, doing that kind of training down there um and i did 160 this week or last week whenever it was for like two reps and it felt great but you're like i haven't deadlift and people be like, oh come on tim you should be doing that's that's twice my body. it's more than twice my body weight right so i'm kind of sitting in a comfortable place with it. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it do i need to deadlift more than 160 yes no i don't 
<laughs> yeah, no. Um, I'm not going to be a cross- CrossFit competitor. So nice deadlift. Just Does it come in, man? Yeah, no, yeah. It's like the, yeah, anyway. No, no, I'm joking. But, I'm joking. It, but the, the periodization element of that is what I've done is a load of general preparation training. Calisthenics and what I've done from a core, like, kinetic chain connectivity perspective transfer. So I have a certain amount of strength in my system. And because of, I think, the calisthenics and the type of training that you do, that system is able to transfer forces effectively, effectively from my lower body through the spine and into my hand which is going to, and shoulder, which is going to pull the bar. But the summer work that I'd done were a huge amount of volume, massive amounts of like lactic kind of hypertrophy variables. It just phases you into being able to go and do something like walk in, having not deadlift heavy for probably over five or six years and pick up a bar, which for me is two times body weight. Like that's, we're doing all right with that, you mm. know, like it's, that's not a bad place to be. And your stuff is the same of going like, well, you've done some general preparatory work or some, some kind of just um, uh, different phases of training. And then when you go and try and apply that into a into a movement skill progression, whatever it might be, that work consolidates. And that's where I think people make so many sort of an oversight in their training is understanding that it's cumulative. Yeah. Like we talk so much in sports and strength and conditioning about training age. And if we get athletes that come in, like I've trained a, a wheelchair racer since Rio, off the back of Rio. And I said to her, the start of the Tokyo cycle, I was like, we need, you've got a training age now. You've got, so what we did for the first few years was just really general, really yeah. like relatively basic. I was like, now you've got a training age. We need to get more specific. But this is the biggest thing that we can do for athletes <laughs> and, and people and clients over time is build that depth of just experience and exposure. So you've just got to like think that if you're thinking about what 2022 looks like, how are you going to grow your training age? Yeah. And and if that is down, your objective is that you want to do calisthenics and you want to do muscle-ups, handstands, human flags, your back levers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, Tim, <laughs> you with do, that... You've got to build yeah, it. Yeah, and it's, and it's this is where I think my... Uh, one of my takeaways of this, just for me personally, but a potentially a bit of a lesson for people that are listening, because this will resonate with some of like... If I, in the past, have not let that not sorted that knee issue out because i've like carried on like really wanting to be able to do a certain like you know do a pistol for or do a dragon squat or do, do these things and even though i'm not necessarily put a time frame on it i was being impatient and i wanted to be able to do it like quick and when you give yourself the permission to go okay i'm taking this long-term mentality with this i've got a year and potentially even longer than it can be longer than a year, but I'm committing to to a year and I'm therefore not in a rush in January, February, March. If when I go into this position with my body, it's painful rather than like trying to just force it. I'm going to address, I'm going to like look at like addressing that. Like, is it because there's a weakness there? Is there some tightness? There? Is there a mobility issue there? But I've got time is on my side. I've got a year now, like that shift in mentality. I can't, I can't emphasize this enough for people that shift in your mentality when you stop rushing to try and do something the quickest way possible. Um, you're going to get there and you're going to be stronger when you get there. You're going to be pain free when you get there. And um, it's going to be a, a far more enjoyable experience. Don't think that like longer, longer doesn't mean tedious. Longer, longer means you learn more. Um, and I think that that's, that's just something I want to encourage people with. And it's definitely impacted me. I think the block for, for a lot of people on that one is that like that kind of mentality requires you to lean into things that you find hard. Yeah. So it's really easy f- for me, for example, to go and do things that I'm good at because I enjoy them and they make me feel good. To do things that I'm not good at requires a certain uh, patience, discipline, and tenacity. Yeah. yeah, and discipline to kind of just keep turning up and doing the stuff that I, if I want to get better at it, then. So an example in calisthenics for me would be my pushing strength will accelerate quite quickly. I can get quite good at pushing movements in a relatively short period of time. My pulling movements are not like that. It takes, I, I really find that quite a much different process to get strong in pull-up based progressions and that sort of stuff. I've talked at length about these sort of things before. But what I know is if I don't do those things, I'm not going to get better at them. Yeah. And and it might take me longer to do that than it would be. I might be I might to get faster wins in my handstand progress, for example, than I can in my muscle up or like lever like hanging base progressions. 
so it's easy to gravitate towards the the stuff that's enjoyable and makes me feel good but if i want that other stuff i've got to go and do some work and i never set training blocks for less than three months nowadays i often program for four weeks for people but in my own my own mind if i'm going into a phase of training it's probably going to be a three-month block um, of different training programs within that and there'll be rest weeks and deloads and that sort of stuff but like i'm not expecting to get stronger within four weeks yeah. i think it's going to be eight 10 12 weeks before i start to see any change and that could be if it's a pulling based movement for me it might be that i get to put five kilos on a way to pull up or it might be that i get an extra repetition or two out but you just got to build that cumulative volume and it just takes time particularly strength yeah yeah um so i i was yeah the the, the whole thing that i was talking about with um the lower body stuff i'm trying to like just get like stronger of like volume uh lower body wise because uh there was this time last year that i had a word myself and went oh you remember how you always said you wanted to do a marathon but you've never done one like yeah, yeah. well why don't you sign up and do one then um so i signed up and did that now you're gonna do an ultra run signed up and did that in in october that that turned into an ultra because the bleeding yeah. someone some someone with their uh their meter what's the the trundle, the trundle wheel. wheel so the trundle <laughs> wheel one job john Measure it out. Twenty six point two. I've never even done a marathon before, and I know it's twenty six point bleeding two. And you make it twenty seven point one. We came round the corner at the end, and you made me run round the field. Why did you make me run round the field? I'm already done twenty seven miles. More is more, Jacko. More is more. That broke me mentally. You would have seen the four people that were there: Mrs. Jacko and some family, uh, uh, her sister and mum. The, the, anyway, yeah, there's a few people there. Saw. <laughs> Catherine tells a great story. <laughs> <laughs> running around a field just to add some distance on is like that is at the end of that that kind of thing i can imagine how i soul destroying that i'd be just like come on mate can you remember, let's just let, can you remember do you used to watch friends not not uh, not, not i say like there was just one where consistency. ross like crumples down underneath the same uh, anyway, there was like basically i wouldn't were i wouldn't move more than another centimeter more than i had to at uh, once i'd crossed the finish line <laughs> anyway um yeah and so 2022 i've signed up for the ring of fire um mm. running around anglesey so that's my little goal for uh, 135 miles in three days that's my goal in uh, for running wise and my lower body training will supplement that which is trying to be stronger for longer rather than just being stronger um and one thing that i quite like one thing i enjoyed about the endurance thing was like mentally it's like just a massive challenge mentally but also your body just starts like bits of you didn't realize were um like i talked about this in the other in the other point it's like my my left my left adductor a hamstring revealed them to myself after like 24 miles or something it was like oh right you're actually not happy but you've just been hiding yeah. all this time and i had to go yeah. this Jacko, we're done. Yeah, no, but <laughs> but now, mate, when I now go into like a Cossack squat, I'm like, okay, it's actually like I can go over to I can go over to so my left I can go over to the left, fine, where the doctor's not on. But when I go over to the right, and I've got this like I've got this like old right knee issue, and going over to the right would be more challenging. I'd be like, oh, it's because of my right side. Whereas actually, it's that adductor on the left, and like left side adductor. It's cha- like being able to having that identified for me. And then now, having made some changes to my training to help with that, it's like, okay, that feels totally different now. Um, yeah. So, yes, the challenge for me is like, can you... I've never done, like, two days back-to-back of, like, a decent amount of running. So it'll be interesting to see what that goes like. But, um, yeah, that's me for uh, that's me for 2022 in that respect. Um and covering some good bases now, Jacko, aren't we? Like we've got some central common areas of interest around calisthenics. You're doing some endurance work. I'm messing about in a CrossFit box. It's good. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Texture. I like it. Oh, I'll, th- I'll give you a calisthenics one, a naughty one, under the radar. Recently, I've been, um, I don't do a lot of, um, I don't do loads of handstand work, right? But something I do quite, and this is, do quite like it. I like the uh, I like the idea of a single handed handstand. Let's be honest, we've all liked yeah, it. No, we've I all liked the idea of that. I saw Roy Gold doing it the other day and I was like, that looks so good. Yeah. So I um I still want to I still want to be able to I still want to work on my pancake. 
um, mm. from a mobility point of view. And being able to spread your legs quite wide is useful for a number of different things in life. Uh, and a single mm. handstand is one of those. And um, <laughs> I've, yeah, so it, 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 it sort of weirdly helps me work on a, two things at once. But um, doing, taking an approach that for, when we talk working with beginners on handstand, just a normal handstand, we talk about like the wall is your friend and the variety of the training. So like, don't just always kick up to it, do it the other way around, walking up, do it at an angle, like all these things, but with some, mm. with this, with a bit of support so you can get some time on task. And I've been doing that just like th- three attempts each side for the last few weeks. And again, that right shoulder with that that like that that upward rotation on my skin, like I'd have some issues holding a single out. Basically, I wasn't getting it positioned well enough in that fully upward upward rotated position. And in my movement prep stuff, knowing that when I was trying to do a single hand, I didn't like it. So then I'm I've addressed that, and then I'm like getting into the position now. It feels real nice. And then yesterday, no, not yesterday, day before, I was like, hold on a minute. <laughs> Something's Nothing's occurring. touching the wall for a, and I made some adjustments and uh, I was like, you know, on my left hand like that. And then my right hand, I was like fingertips. And then like that, I was mm. like down, I was down to like just these two and barely using them. And I was like, you know, when you have that feeling when you like first learn to do a handstand, and you're like, you come off the wall for like a split second. You're like, I'm doing I it. it. I did it. I wasn't doing it, but it felt a little bit like I was doing it. So um, a long term, I'm fairly, I'm fairly certain, and I've seen that many people be able to do them. I'm fairly certain it's it's obviously possible. It's not, it's not impossible, but it feels impossible. Um, but if I use the superpower that you describe of consistency and just small amounts and often just like maybe once or twice a week i just touch base on it for every week of 2022 i do feel like i'll be able to show you something of a i think jonathan last the aka the handstand king yeah suggests i think he says like five seconds is like what's deemed within the, the world of yeah. you know, an acceptable amount of time i feel like i feel like that could happen that that could happen so there's there's a little there's a little play goal um for calisthenics my, my my actually my calisthenics overriding goal you know for 2022 is i want to make the things that i just want to make the everything i want to make the things that i can do that i like like i like doing muscle ups i like doing human flags i like doing frog time stands like i like it i like i like the feeling of being able to do it and i know and i can do them really nice and really smooth and really clean yeah that my body's in good shape and that's almost that's my goal to like for to be to be, as Michael Jackson would have said, a smooth a criminal. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'll lay my stall out before we uh, before we sign off. Uh, I'm just going to keep going the same vein of volume. I'm not. I've not got a massive desire to learn anything technically, skillfully more complex. Um, I'm gonna. I want to just. I need to do a little bit of work on my hands. This uh, my training's been a little bit sort of like just not sporadic, but like just a bit all over the place. So I haven't done a lot of hand, mm. consistent handstand work. I can still balance con- like well. But I need to just, I want to just make sure I'm maintaining this year handstand push ups, freestanding, and planche, just because I like to be able to do them. And if I can do a handstand push up, I can do a worm to handstand, which is my most fun, <laughs> favorite thing to do ever. Um, so I'm going to just gonna keep doing some stuff on there. Um, I want to be able to build my pulling capacity. So I want to be able to get that back up a little bit so I can actually put some volume together, partly because it, I want to be able to do my CrossFit movements better without having to kip as much, but I need more volume and endurance to be able to do that. And I also just want to play around with some different kind of pulling patterns and variations. So pull-ups, but just general capacity, keeping that on my, on my calisthenics days, keeping that relatively sort of loosey-goosey, a um, bit of variety. Um, and the other thing is I, I need to do some experimentation and, and all of this will generally be built around the variables of the bulk and bendy program, which is becoming a thing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so it's going to be more like sort of like sixes, sevens, eights, probably some like trying to get in with 10 sets across the course of a week and stuff. I need to kind of, because I'm now doing CrossFit three days a week, I need to build in some more time for this kind of work that's kind of also from a structured perspective that's if if we talk about periodization 
one of the really important things is that you just have that consistency of sessions. So like you can say, I'm going to consistently do something for a year, but if you only do it once a week, then you're not, it's like going to take you a while to get there. So I need to kind of like work out and I reckon I can do that kind of work. I don't need 90 minutes for that work. I can get a set of like those pull-ups done really easily and it might take me 15 minutes. Like yeah. that's super achievable. If I don't tell myself this really stupid story of like, I can't possibly take 10 minutes out. I yeah. wish you can. Yeah. Like, I can do five minutes prep, do 10 minutes pull-ups, do that in a day. That's like you're done. work in the bank. Yeah, yeah. And on the bulk and bendy program, I've uh, like warming up with sissy squats into back bridges and back out to sissy squats those types of things mm. these days it's uh fairly naughty um <laughs> but yeah that will that is all to come um great so um the only thing uh, my final question for for you and potentially for some of this is there's people listening going okay um I'm on board, lads. I'm I'm going to get involved in this for a year. I'm going to come. I'm 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 taking up the offer, and uh, and I'll have a year's membership with you guys. You you, you know you, you say funny jokes about this that the other podcast. I'm, I'm in. You're probably <laughs> nice, good at. You've probably got some good training programs because you've got some gags on the podcast. Um, that's my <laughs> rationale. But what's realistic, Timbo, for me? If you're gonna, if I'm gonna help set myself some goals, like what's realistic? Am I gonna do? Am I going to do the back lever, the handstand, the human yeah, flag, the, yeah, yeah. Or the muscle up all in one go, all in one year? Or what's what's realistic? Because that's what we, we also want to, the whole reason why we're saying to people is, you know, um, trying to find a quick fix or this, there, or false promises. Like, no, let's commit to a year and let's yeah. see what we can get done in a year. But what is realistic? Well, I'm going to answer this, Jacko, with the age old. This will take us back right back to the very first podcasts where we saw, to, where we found ourselves saying a lot of, well, it depends. So <laughs> someone, depends. so I, I said that about something to someone recently and they were like, well, no, they answered. I asked a question. They were like, well, Jacko, as you may well know, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on your training age. So if you are, what well, we'll say, okay, it depends on, in calisthenics, it for me largely depends on two things, three things. It depends on your training age. It depends on the level of the skills that you're trying to learn and it yeah. depends on how consistent or how much you're going to do that type of training. So those are like quite three key variables. Your training age, if you are going to learn something skill-based and you've got some good training background, you'll learn quite a lot. You could yeah. learn and bring muscle up and a back lever, maybe a human flag in one year. If you are like, if you've got a good amount of strength training in the bank, if you haven't got that much strength training, and I mean like proper resistance training, um, yeah. in the bank you might find that it takes you a year to learn to do two or three pull-ups like so it kind of it really does depend but don't let that put you off because there's loads of other stuff you can do in calisthenics which is super interesting super fun but doesn't require you to be as strong as it is to lift your whole body weight three times remember when yeah. you're doing pull-ups it's not a small thing it's like it's actually you're yeah. lifting, literally lifting yourself and that's a yeah. lot of weight yeah. Um, and then the, I, yeah, the final thing is oh. just that on the skill progression stuff that I, from my experience at least the harder skills I try to do the longer it takes and the more kind of, of this supplementary work I need to do so if I want to go for example 90 degree handstand push up I've got to do quite a lot of strength training to get that yeah. like I can't just tick stuff off like I used to um, as the more difficult progressions that we get towards yeah I wanted to just say that if um, in terms of what what's 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 realistic? What can I achieve? And the reality with being being less specific of like a thing, just what we can, I feel, what I feel like we can guarantee you is, and guarantee is a strong word, but we can guarantee you that if you stay consistent for a whole year, you will make some incredible progress. Yeah. Like you will, when, you will make progress. There's no doubt that if you're consistent for a whole year, you will week in, week out, month in, month out, you will make some progress the same way with that single hand handstand i just suggested that if i'm could if i'm not consistent i ain't gonna do it but if i'm consistent i'll definitely make progress because in the last month i've made loads of progress because i've been consistent mm. with it for a month it's can i be consistent with it not just for one month but two three four twelve months then we'll yeah. see whether i can hold it for five seconds or not it doesn't matter but i'll know i'll have made progress um and and with that yeah and with that progress, you will definitely be able to reflect back on you and go, Craggy, I, I didn't used to be able to do that before. Mm. Like whatever it is, it's your first handstand or it's a frog stand or it's a pull-up or it's a, 
uh, some of the strength and play exercises, like whatever it is, there'll be stuff that you're like, I didn't used to be able to do that. And that is such a cool feeling. Like it makes yeah. you feel good. It's proof. It's physical proof to yourself that you've made some real tangible change in your body. Mm. And that's what I love about calisthenics. Boom. That's a good place. To be. Yeah, drop the mic on that one, Jacko. <laughs> right. So school of Everything's on there. Go and check it out. Invest in yourself for a year. What, 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 I put that little bit of thing that will be put on the landing page, Jacko. Oh, yeah. Invest, uh, spend a year doing something that most people won't, so you can do things that most people can't. There you go. There's your little sign-off takeaway for you. So, any questions, guys, drop us a message. Our email addresses are pretty straightforward, tim at schoolofcalisaints.com or david at schoolofcalisaints.com. You can get us on Instagram. You can contact us in the virtual classroom. We call it virtual classroom. It's our online training pl platform these days, but it's on the, on the website. You can get in touch with us there. Um, and yeah, sign in, log on, get your seven day free trial, come say hi, and then um, go and set your stall out and get started on, uh, on whatever it is you want to learn for the year. And we're excited to support you on that journey. Yeah, and that 25% off annual memberships is valid until the end of January. So you've got a couple of weeks to think about it, but get started. Why, why put it off? You're going to do it. So don't wait till the end of the month. Like, get started Time's now. Time's ticking, literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you, but, but don't rush. You've got a whole year, so don't worry about it. But you've got a whole year if you start now. <laughs> yeah, the, the sooner you start, the more time you've got, basically. Um, but yeah, your membership will only be, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, yeah, your membership runs for a whole start, year anyway, yeah, so you've always got a year when you start. It's easy anyway. to finish in December, isn't it? Let's not get yeah. bogged down. <laughs> right, until next time, keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed.